You know, when most gardeners think about improving soil, their minds usually go to compost heaps, worm bins, or maybe animal manures. While these certainly play a role, the real unsung heroes of soil fertility are, believe it or not, fungi. These tireless decomposers quietly transform lifeless plant material into rich dark humus, the foundation of living healthy soil. Without fungi, organic matter would just accumulate in a dry fibrous pile, but with them, it becomes that fertile, crumbly substance that feeds plants for decades. The exciting part is, you don't need a forest floor to cultivate these fungal allies. Actually, you can encourage rotting fungi right in your own garden beds with just a few simple, practical steps. By feeding them properly, maintaining the right environment, and while well, respecting their natural processes, you can harness one of nature's most powerful soil-building forces. The first step to encouraging fungi is, honestly, just understanding their diet. While bacteria thrive on quick, sugary foods like fruit scraps or green grass clippings, fungi are specialists in breaking down the tougher, more resistant materials. Their unique enzymes allow them to digest lignin and cellulose, which are two compounds found in woody and fibrous plants. Instead of piling your garden with only soft greens, try creating layers of food designed specifically for fungi. Wood chips, straw, shredded stems, cardboard, and dry leaves are all ideal choices. When you use them together, they form the buffet that fungi really crave. A helpful ratio to follow is three parts of these woody or fibrous materials to one part of softer greens. For example, three buckets of wood chips blended with one bucket of fresh weeds or kitchen scraps provide the perfect balance. The woody material gives fungi long-term fuel while the greens add just enough nitrogen to keep the decomposition process active. Laying this mixture in a 2-3 to three inch layer across the soil is often enough to set the stage for rapid fungal colonization. The fungi will move in silently, weaving networks of fine threads through the material as they begin breaking it down into humus. Feeding fungi is only the beginning, whether or not they flourish depends heavily on water, too little and fungal threads dry up and retreat, too much, and oxygen disappears, suffocating the system. The key is to maintain a balance where the organic matter feels like a sponge that has been wrung out. One effective method is to water the woody or straw layer deeply once, then cap it with a lighter mulch such as grass clippings to hold in the moisture. This creates a protective blanket that keeps conditions steady. To give the system an extra boost, some gardeners pour a diluted molasses solution over the carbon-rich material. The formula is simple, one teaspoon of molasses stirred into one gallon of water. This creates just enough sugar to activate microbial partners that work alongside fungi without overwhelming them. Moisture is only half of the equation. Fungi also need oxygen to weave their delicate threads. That's why it's best to avoid compacting mulch layers into heavy airtight piles. Instead, spread the material loosely enough to allow small pockets of air, creating pathways where fungal colonies can breathe and expand. When fungi are thriving, their presence is unmistakable. You might pull back a layer of mulch to discover white mats spreading across wood chips or notice clusters of mushrooms pushing up after a rainfall. These are signs that fungi are hard at work breaking down linen into complex organic compounds. At this stage, the best thing a gardener can do is step back. Unlike bacterial compost piles that benefit from turning and mixing, fungal systems rely on stillness. Disturbing the fungal mat by constantly moving or digging through it interrupts the delicate network they are building. Left undisturbed, those mats will continue weaving, gradually transforming coarse material into soft, dark humus. Over time, this quiet process pays off dramatically. Even stubborn clay soils begin to change, their heavy clumps breaking apart into crumbly, friable earth. Garden beds enriched with fungal networks retain water more evenly, drain more efficiently, and hold nutrients more securely for plant roots. Although fungi will find their way into your garden on their own, there are simple ways to give them a head start. One of the easiest is to bring in a small amount of soil from a place where fungi are already thriving, such as the shaded edge of a wooded area or the base of an old compost heap. This soil is often laced with fungal spores and thread-like fragments. 
When sprinkled over fresh wood chips or cardboard and watered in, these organisms quickly take hold in their new home. Another highly effective approach is burying partially rotted logs or branches directly in garden beds. This practice, sometimes referred to as hugel culture, provides fungi with long-term reservoirs of carbon. As the logs decay, they act as sponges, slowly releasing moisture and humus-building compounds for years. Plants can also play a role in fostering fungal life. Many species naturally partner with fungi, feeding them sugars through their roots in exchange for nutrients. Adding clover, vetch, or perennial ground covers near your fungal beds can help sustain the balance, creating a living system where plants and fungi support one another. The power of fungi becomes clear when you see what happens in different garden scenarios. Imagine a gardener dealing with heavy clay soil. In the fall, they spread a 4-inch layer of wood chips across the ground, sprinkle on some soil from an old compost heap, and keep the area damp with occasional watering. By spring, the chips are streaked with white fungal threads, and the once clumpy clay beneath begins to crumble into a lighter, healthier structure. In another garden, a trench is filled with rotting logs topped with two buckets of straw and one bucket of kitchen scraps, then watered well. Over the following season, the trench evolves into a fungal highway, releasing humus steadily into the soil and nourishing the plants above it. Even the simplest of practices, like laying shredded cardboard under mulch, can set fungi in motion. The cardboard holds moisture, fungi colonize the surface, and a steady layer of humus forms over time, all without constant attention or turning. Fungi are nature's recyclers. Unlike quick bacterial activity that burns through organic matter rapidly, fungi work more slowly and steadily, building humus that lasts. This stable form of organic matter resists erosion, binds nutrients in place, and provides a foundation for soil fertility that endures for decades. The beauty of working with fungi is their independence. Once conditions are right, they do the rest. By feeding them with carbon-rich materials, keeping their habitat moist but airy, inoculating them when possible, and allowing their networks to remain undisturbed, you set in motion a process that improves soil structure, fertility, and resilience far beyond what quick fixes can offer. For gardeners who want to enrich their soil naturally, Encouraging rotting fungi is one of the simplest and most effective steps you can take. These quiet workers turn stubborn waste into black gold, creating humus that supports vibrant, long-lasting plant growth. At Soil and Crop Central, we believe in sharing practical evergreen strategies that anyone can use. If this guide has given you new insight into how fungi can transform your garden, don't keep it to yourself. Subscribe to Soil and Crop Central and share this resource with fellow gardeners. Together, we can bring back these fungal allies and build soils that remain fertile for generations.